Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I am going to talk about interpreting uh, a particle, a radioactive time graph. So looking at the numbers, number of a radioactive isotope versus the time and interpreting that graph. So what I have here is I have got a graph of n and you should see this n before in PV equals nkt and this n means the number of atoms. So this is the number of atoms or molecules, and in PV equals NKT, you can use that, of course, to find temperature, etc. But in this case, for this radioactivity, this is the numbers of atoms, and importantly, these are the radioactive ones. So what happens is that uranium-235 or something will decay, and it's the number of those atoms that are left over time. And as you can see, and you may have seen this before at GCSE with half-life curves, as you can see that it is a curve. So it starts here, at this point here, and this here <coughs> is the, we call it N naught, or the maximum stroke initial amount, okay? So you might be given an initial amount, etc. And as it goes over time, this thing decays. And it's not a nice straight line graph at all. However, if I look at individual points, so I've already marked a couple of points out here. One of the things to remember is when interpreting graphs, certain things are important. The intercept, the area, and the gradient. And in this case, I'm going to look at the gradient. So I'm going to take this point here and I'm going to draw a tangent there, okay? So this is the tangent, okay, or the gradient at this point here. <coughs> so the change in N over the change in T for this position here, okay? And that is going to be negative, because it is a negative gradient, times a constant, and in this case I'm going to use lambda, and I'll explain why in a minute, times by the value of n I have there. Okay. Now I could take another point here, and I could take a gradient at this point here, and what's really interesting is for this value of n, which is bigger, my gradient is still got this same constant over here. So this point here is minus lambda times by n, and that is my change in n over my change in t for that position there. What this lambda is called, and it's really vital, it, I know in waves it can be used in wavelength, but we're going to be using it something different here. This lambda is known as the decay constant. And this is unique to each material. What this is, is a percentage that will decay over a certain amount of times. So you might see this as per second, you might see it per year, you might see it per day, per hour, etc. And it's unique to every single material. So this here, from a graph, you are able to, if you took a gradient at any point, so if you took the gradient of this here, so the change in N over the change in T, you would have a relationship of the gradient being this value here. This would be the gradient at a point. And like I said, it's very interesting that every single point along this, if you related that gradient to the number of particles, the value of n at that point, this value of lambda, this decay constant, remained the same. So we can take an example here. If my gradient, so this point here, 
let's say I had <coughs> uh, 100 particles. So at this point here, I had 100 particles. Okay. I could work out my gradient. So let's say that my gradient in this case here, so let's actually give some values to this. That's 10, that's 20. That is 50. That is 125. So I'm going to work out my gradient here. <clears throat> for this point. So I'm working out the gradient at this tangent here. So my gradient, if I just wheel this over, do do do. Okay. My gradient equals the change in y over the change in x, which is 75 over 10, which is 7.5. And it is a negative gradient, so I must remember that negative sign. Okay. I know that my gradient at a point, so my gradient also equals minus lambda n. And the n at that point is 100. So I know that 7.5 equals minus lambda times 100. I know that lambda equals minus 7.5 over minus 100, which is, I'll just double check my calculator, 7.5 divided by 100, 0 0.075. So that means for my material, this material that I have invented here, every unit of time so this might have been in days this might have been in seconds every unit of time this is how much i will be decaying by so every unit of time i will lose 0.075 of it which is approximately 7.5 percent every time interval so i'll lose another seven and a half percent that's another seven and a half percent okay so that is how you can use these graphs to get information about the material. In the next video, I'm going to be showing how to do, look at other formulae that are related to this one here.